Hey Calvary, my name is Robert. Thanks for tuning in this morning for your word for the day. I have a question for you this morning. How good are you at taking care of or growing plants around your house or trees or anything that is green? Uh, some of you uh, are great at that. I see some of your homes. I see the things that you grow and maintain, and it's amazing. And I go to some of your houses, and it's just gravel everywhere. And I'm not judging you because I kind of want to do the same thing. See, I don't have a brown thumb. I don't instantly kill green things that are around me, but I don't have a green thumb either. Uh, we had four plants uh, outside of our house that we were renting for four years, and I killed one of them, and there's one that doesn't look like it's gonna make it through this summer. And so I'm at a solid 50% rate of keeping things alive. Not exactly great. And you know, the interesting thing is when you look at growing things and plants and agriculture, when you look at the teaching of Jesus, Jesus talks about this a lot. He talks about things growing. He talks about plants. He talks about planting seeds and things growing and things dying. And I think there's a couple of reasons for that. First, of the culture. He was in a heavily agriculture-based society. They were growing their food on a regular basis. They were planting seeds. I don't know the last time you planted a seed, but it's been a long time since I actually took seed and put it in the ground and watered it. It's been a real long time. They were doing this on a regular basis. And so partly he's speaking to the culture, but the other side of it is that Jesus understood the, the connection with the growth of a plant in and our spiritual growth as well. There's a lot of things that we can see and visualize easily in the life cycle of a plant that make a lot of sense with how we can see our spiritual life's structure. And I wanna share with you a passage, a parable that Jesus tells in Mark chapter four that talks about this very thing. In Mark chapter four, starting in verse one, Jesus says, again, Jesus didn't say this, but the book of Mark says, again, he, that is Jesus, began to teach beside the sea. And a very large crowd gathered around him so that he got into a boat and sat it out on the sea and the whole crowd beside the sea on the land. So Jesus goes out on the boat. Everyone's watching and looking as he teaches. And he, it says, he was teaching them many things in parables and his teaching, he said to them this, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow and as he sowed, some seed fell along the path and birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell onto rocky ground where it didn't have much soil, and immediately it sprang up since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil and produced grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. And he said, those who have ears, let him hear. So Jesus tells this parable that he says, this is incredibly important. You guys need to pay attention to this. And if you're like me on first reading, you're like, okay, what does that mean? And I've gotten students, you know, in our student ministry throughout the years that have brought this passage to me, highlighted in their Bible app, and they go, what does this mean? What do I do with this? And the, the amazing thing is I love when Jesus explains the parables because one that tells me I'm not alone in being confused about a passage. The, the people there, whether it be the disciples or the listeners are like, hey, what's this actually mean? But it also allows us to kind of see behind the curtain of what Jesus is thinking and, and meaning with his words. And that's exactly what he does. You skip down a few verses in 13, it says this. And he said to them, do you not understand this parable? How then will you understand all the parables? And I'm like, okay, thanks, Jesus. I'm dumb. Explain it to me. It says, the sower sows the words. The word meaning the word of God is what he's referring to here. And it says, and those along the path where the word is sown, when they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown to them. And those are the ones that are sown on the rocky ground. The ones who, when they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy but they have no root in themselves and endure for a while when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns. And those are the ones that hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter and choke out the word and it proves unfruitful. But those who are, that were sown on the good soil, the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit, thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. 
So here Jesus explains and gives a, a peek behind the curtain of what he means in this passage. And you also see the, the reason that Jesus says, hey, this is important, pay attention. Because what he's saying is this parable explains how you receive and respond to the word of God in your life. At whatever stage of your spiritual journey of following Jesus, this can still apply to you. How do you receive the word of God as it speaks into your life? Does it immediately get taken away and, and doesn't even enter into your life as something significant and worthy of, of time and consideration and application? Or that, that next reality, it comes in and it, it's shallow and you're like, yeah, that's a good idea, but immediately it just gets burned up because you don't put any investment, you don't allow it to take root in your life or that next one maybe is the most risky for, for many of us. And that is, it actually comes into our life that the Word of God begins to grow and take root, but it says the cares of this world start to distract and overwhelm and overcome. Maybe that's your friends or family pulling you in other directions. Maybe it's you focusing on the things of the world, the, the, the success, the accomplishments, the riches, the possessions, the other priorities that you put in your life. And eventually those pull you away from your walk with God. But the fourth option he says that's available to us is that it comes into our life and begins to grow and produce fruit. It means the word of God is working in your life. It's producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our life. We're growing in how God made us to be. So how are you receiving the word of God today? Which of those four best describes where you're at? And understand that, that God's desire for you and our desire for you as well is for you to be in that fourth category of it's coming into your life and growing. And it doesn't mean there's not difficulty. It doesn't mean there's not thorns that may surround you. It doesn't mean that the sun isn't beating down. But it means you're investing the time and energy to grow and to be healthy enough to endure those things so that you can grow to be more the person that you were created by God to be in this life and honor him with that. So it's our prayer today that, that you would not wither away, that the sun would not scorch your spiritual life, but that you would grow and thrive as you invest time in growing your relationship with Jesus. We'll see you next time.